my name is Kimberly Langley, and I currently reside in Mission, Texas. I'm originally from a very small town in northeastern Kansas called Ottawa. That's where I was born. Um, my parents divorced when I was quite young. Um, I was still in, I guess, diapers, if you will, when they got divorced and lost contact with my father when I was still a child. The earliest I can remember my testimony beginning was finding out that my birth father was gay. I, I think that that exposure to that particular lifestyle had a lot to do with me going into that lifestyle. I was also abused as a child by a close family member. That led to me not wanting to be a woman at all. And if I had to be a woman, then I wasn't going to be your normal average woman. I was going to be one that someone didn't mess with anymore. I toughened up and I projected an image to the world that I felt safe projecting. And the more tomboyish and the more manly I became, the safer I felt. Um, I continued to live my life that way and in a lesbian lifestyle from the time I was 19 until I was well into my 30s. And in my 30s, I, by then I had already gone through three different uh, relationships with women and they were all abusive um, in one way or another. I found myself questioning once again my identity and I figured that if I couldn't be a good enough woman to function in any relationship, then maybe I wasn't meant to be a woman. And I ran into probably the wrong person at the wrong time, and I was exposed to the idea of being transgender. And I felt like a light bulb went on. And it was like I found an explanation as to why I was so dysfunctional in so many areas of my life. In all of this happening in my life and all the dysfunction, I had a foundation of knowing who Jesus was, of knowing who God was, what they had done for mankind, that Jesus had come and would have still come if it was just me on this earth. He still would have come just for me. So I had all of that foundation, but because I didn't have it as heart knowledge, it was just head knowledge, that's why I believe that I was so susceptible to all of these other ideas of who I should be because I didn't have an identity in Christ. I just had this idea of who I might work out to be if I could figure out who I was supposed to be. It's interesting that you said um, it was like a light bulb going off because I think yeah. Um, when you when you embrace this transgender identity, for me, it's like a, I always described it as like a light switch. And it's like all of a sudden that becomes your whole world. I had always heard the statement, God doesn't make mistakes, but I felt like he had made a mistake with me. Yeah. That he had made a mistake in making me a woman because I had never been able to function as female because of the early traumas that I had gone through. And because of those early traumas and not being able to function in my female identity, you know, as the woman that Jesus created me to be, I totally just, it was, it was so far beyond embracing the idea of being a man that I, I, I was just blown away by the idea that I could finally have an identity that I could function in, that I might be able to be whole in some way. The whole idea of that life was explained to me by a counselor 
who claimed to be a Christian counselor. And so, of course, with them claiming to be a Christian counselor, there was a lot of trust there. Because I felt like, well, this has got to be a God thing if this person is claiming to be a Christian. So they explained to me the whole idea of injecting the testosterone, the changes that my body would go through, the surgeries that I could have that would, you know, give me the outward appearance that would match my inward appearance since I was created to be this man. And I thought that if I could become this man, I could function as the man I was supposed to be. It was thrilling, for lack of a better term. It was thrilling. Um, I felt an, an, an almost exhilaration in that I was finally going to be a whole person. I wasn't going to be bits and pieces of different people I had tried to be based on who I was around. You know, I had learned to be a chameleon. I had learned to take on the identity of people that I surrounded myself with. And this time, it was almost like I was taking on an identity that was all my own. Yeah. And if I could take on an identity that was all my own, then I didn't have to rely on anyone else. I could just be me. Yeah, and so um, so what did your body go through in the first year, first year or two? Uh, the first year, I started to see more hair growth on my back and my arms and my hands. My voice got lower. Um, there were some other physical changes that I saw as far as um, not getting my period anymore. I felt like I was going through changes that were going to make me whole. Did you have ever have the sense that maybe this wasn't real? 2017, I had already been injecting testosterone for about a year and a half. And I moved from the town that I was living in, in eastern Texas. I moved up to Oklahoma and I remember starting to feel just very uncomfortable with some of the decisions that I was making. And I would get dressed every day. I would put the binder on and, you know, the chest binder on and I would get dressed and I would put my ball cap on backwards. And, you know, just my whole thing of getting ready every day started to make me very uncomfortable. And I, I can't even explain why. And then from Oklahoma, I stayed there for a few months. And then I moved up to uh, Kansas, where my aunt and uncle lived. And they live in the middle of nowhere. And it was almost like God had moved me 20 some odd years and 2,700 miles around the nation to different places to get me all by myself in a little apartment in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, I had this experience one night of, I had, for some reason, I had praise and worship music on. I was listening to music about Jesus and I had already been listening to different pastors preach over the course of several days and I was by myself in the middle of the night and I remember feeling like there was someone in the room with me but there was no one there. I looked around, I looked through my whole apartment, there was no one there but me but I could feel the presence of someone else in that apartment with me and I just broke and I started to cry. I just started to weep so heavily and I fell to my knees and I remember just calling out his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
And it was in those moments that I knew that my identity had to be in him if I was going to survive in this world. I had to surrender everything about myself if I was ever going to find an identity. It had to be rooted and grounded in Christ. And everything from my past came flooding back. The abuse and everything that I had gone through in my relationships and the choice to be transgender and everything. It was just, it was like a video playing in my head. But at the same time, it was going through the filter of Jesus standing there with me. I had found who I wanted to be. I wanted to be a woman of God. My whole outlook on life and my outlook on myself changed 180 degrees. I, I don't even know how to describe it, honestly. It was, it was a, a freedom that I had never felt before in my life. It was a freedom that I was getting from a place that I had not been since my childhood. Um, I remember being so innocent and, you know, being so excited about going to church as a child. And I hadn't felt that same excitement until that night in my apartment in 2017. And it was just, it was amazing. And I remember calling my mom and I was still crying and crying and crying. And she answered and she said, what's wrong? And I said, I explained to her what was going on. And we cried on the phone together and prayed together for the first time in years. And she said, are you ready to listen to him? And I said, I can hear him loud and clear. And that was a first for me because I had heard people my whole life say, God told me this, or I heard God say this. And I used to get so frustrated because I had never heard him speak. And that night, I heard him speak loud and clear. Everything about me changed from that night on. My life is not by any means perfect. It's not. Um, I have my days when I get frustrated, I get angry, I'm human. But the emotions don't control me. The memories are just that, they're memories. And even when they come, they go much more quickly than they ever did. I, I have a freedom now that I've never known before. And I have an identity that is so much stronger than any of those lifestyles ever offered me before. Do you have um, Do you have any desire to go back? No, I don't. And I'll tell you why. Because I came home from Kansas. I came home to Texas, and. I had a dream when I came home to Texas and it was a dream where I stood before Jesus and he gave me a choice and he told me that if I chose him that he would make my life greater than I ever imagined possible but if I chose to turn my back on him again I would not live through it. And I chose to believe him and I took him as his, at his word. And so I have watched him even recently in the last few months. I have watched him take my life and turn it 
into something that I didn't even imagine was possible. There were there was a time in my life when I was so afraid to tell this story to anyone because I for fear of not being accepted, for fear of someone knowing the quote unquote truth about me. You know, I was so afraid of my past. Were there things you could see along the way where um, God was really answering your prayer, or well, answering the prayers of your mom? Oh, definitely. The biggest things that I saw were in how the relationships I was in ended, because it wasn't a gradual ending of a relationship. It was just a wham, it's over. Wow. <laughs> type of thing you know it wasn't a gradual thing like let's try and work it out or anything like that no it was like a somebody went to jail and the relationship is over people ask me all the time how did you survive some of the physical abuse that you went through and how did you survive some of the emotional and mental abuse that you went through um, and my answer is I had a grandmother and a mother who prayed my grandmother is since passed my mom, I am blessed to still have her, and I, I actually still live with her, and I, I know that her prayers and the prayers of my grandmother are what got me through some really dangerous times. I had moments when one of my partners held a knife to my throat while I slept, and I woke up to this, and it was... It, and, and I had no way of knowing if she intended to use that knife on me or if it was just her way of manipulating me into being afraid of her. Or I, I to, still to this day, I do not know why that person did not use that knife on me. But instances like that, yes, I know that their prayers worked. I know that I am alive because of their prayers and because of the prayers of a lot of other people. So that would be my advice to whether they're transgender or they're gay or they're lesbian or bisexual. I mean, whatever lifestyle they are living in, in that community, do not stop praying for them because God hears those cries and he hears the cries of those people in that lifestyle because trust me when I tell you, there is a lot of abuse that goes on that is not discussed. It is That's not right. talked about, it is not brought to the forefront. It is made out to be a lifestyle where it's all fun and games and it's all about equality. It's not any of that. I mean, I know plenty of people who are still in that lifestyle who live in a state of daily torment because yeah. they just cannot find a sense of wholeness or a sense of happiness no matter what they try so prayer i believe is our best weapon against all of that somebody that comes across this video that's transgender what would you say to them i would tell them the identity that you're looking for is rooted and grounded in jesus not what you're into right now jesus loves you more than you will ever know and he came and died just for you he's real and he's he's waiting fall to your knees just call out his name 